Now you have to switch your brain to English. Uh, I am Ferdiana, and I would like to start my talk today with a story from my childhood. So when I was a little girl, I thought that life is certain. Fut my future is certain. I wanted for sure to become a singer and a hairdresser. <laughs> but as I started growing up, I started to realize that life is a bitch. Life is an uncertain bitch because it neither gave me the right skills to become a singer, nor did it give me the useful skills to become a hairdresser. This is what I did to my boyfriend a few months ago. He is sitting there. <laughs> so given that it didn't give me any of these skills, I ended up in science. Now, I am a social scientist and I deal with the communication of uncertainties in nuclear risks. Uh, when I talk about uncertainties uh, in this presentation, I'm talking about the things that uh, we or scientists don't know for sure, things that scientists cannot predict, scientific disagreements or uh, limitations, etc. So what does my PhD mean in practice? Uh, I will give you an example now. So imagine a nuclear accident happens here in Germany now. You hear this sound and you go outside to, hear, to see what's hap what happens. You see some colors in the sky, but you have no idea that while you are standing outside, radioactive, radioactive ashes are falling on your skin, thereby causing you cancer. <laughs> you have no information whatsoever, because while you are standing there outside, politicians and scientific experts are staying somewhere inside waiting for 100% accurate information before they release it to the people. Why? They don't want to increase panic. But this waiting time is costing you your life. And this happened for real in Chernobyl. And this bridge is now called the Bridge of Death because none of these people who went to see the beautiful colors in the sky managed to remain alive. And similar uninformed decisions were also taken in Fukushima afterwards due to lack of information or at least timely information. But did things change since then and are we better informed now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Really, now there are a lot of scientific information telling us how to communicate risk, how to behave in uh, nuclear emergencies, how to communicate things that we know, but still, what about things that we don't know for sure? Should we also communi communicate scienti uncertain scientific results? Does it really increase panic or does it actually increase trust by making science look more realistic because anyway, scientists cannot know everything? Or even better, does it help people to make better decisions by weighing the reliability of the information they receive. Let's figure this out now. So th there are a lot of factors that we have to consider when communicating uncertainties. This can start from the sender of the information, the channel through which the information is sent, the message itself, its content, its composition, and then the receiver, which in this case could be you. Now let's have a quick look at each of them and then see how they are interlinked afterwards. So the sender of the information has a crucial importance mainly because of its trustworthiness. Just a few days ago I saw a tweet from an anti-vaxxer anti saying that the very fact that governments support vaccines is the biggest reason to doubt and be against them. I mean, the government is also against drunk driving, but it doesn't mean we have to be against it. But anyway, that's none of my business. What it shows is that we really have to be careful in the trustworthiness of the sender of the information. The channel through which the information is sent is also important, mainly because of the, how it is filtered when it is sent from the sender through the media to the, to the receiver. My, my personal favorite ex example is one mentioned by Professor Spiegelhalter, who explains that there is one study who found that uh, they, there is a, socioeconomic, a linkage between socioeconomic position and higher risk of glioma. Glioma is a, a broad category of uh, tumors in brain and spinal cord. So they found that who, people who, are, uh, who have sci higher socioeconomic position have higher risk, but they ex explicitly mentioned also in the, uh, the limitations in the abstract that this could be an artifact. Why? Because people who do better in life are more likely to go themselves checked, more likely to perceive risk, and more likely to, to be diagnosed. But the press re release guys, they decided to completely ignore this, plus spice it up a bit, and they wrote that high levels of education are linked to heightened brain tumor risk. This is not what the study was about, obviously, but then what does the media do as always? In this case, the Daily Mirror, they wrote, why going to university increases risk of getting a brain tumor? <laughs> now, all of you who were considering of quitting university, now you have an extra reason. So, 
this clearly shows how important it is that every channel through which information is sent communicates uncertainties of the study. Now, I'm, I'm sure you are smart enough not to quit university based on this piece of information, but this can have huge impact on more serious matters like the nuclear or radiological ones. But what is even more important than communicating uncertainties is the way they are communicated. And this leads us to the message itself. So message uh, about uncertainties can be communicated numerically by numbers, probabilities, percentages, etc. Verbally, by words uh, such as likely, unlikely, etc. By risk comparisons, visually, etc. I would like to give you an example of risk comparisons first. Uh, has any one of you ever heard of banana equivalent dose? No? Great. <laughs> uh, so, banana equivalent dose is a way of telling people how low a certain radioactivity dose is in the environment. So, bananas uh, have naturally occurring radioactive isotopes, particularly uh, potassium-40, and by mentioning this, we only want to tell people how low a certain dose is. But the success of this communication was not as good as expected. Instead of people not being afraid of low radioactivity doses, they started being afraid of eating bananas. <laughs> There were media articles everywhere, be careful how many bananas you eat, bananas can kill you. Also, also different questions in different forums like this one, how many bananas can you eat before you die? Well, personally, I would say just one if you choke on it. But, but otherwise, you would have to eat around 35 million bananas a day in order for them to be harmful for you. <laughs> there is more! <laughs> so this shows how important it is that we are careful in how we communicate about information because it can really increase panic if it's not done the, the right way. Now let's go back to the beginning when I mentioned a nuclear accident happening here. So if you remember, I said radioactive ashes falling on your skin and causing you cancer and then I threw something on you. So what if I told you that what I threw on you is also radioactive? That's true. There is an 80% chance that between 1% and 2% of the dust that I threw in you has radioactive composition. But don't worry, it's very unlikely that it has negative effects on you. So how does this communication sound to you? Bad, I know. <laughs> because although I used both numbers and words, it is still unclear and it leads to confusion. So how can we make this better? First of all, don't worry, what I threw to you was salt. And also, uh, and it indeed has radioactive composition because just as bananas, uh, Himalayan salt has also a 2% mixture of potassium, magnesium, and calcium. So indeed, I am not quite certain of the exact amount that, of the radioactivity that I threw on you, but I am quite sure that just as is the case with bananas, you would have to eat a huge amount of salt in order for it to be harmful for you. And this leads to my, to my first question. So, my take-home message in this case is that when you communicate uncertainties the right way, it doesn't increase panic. It actually increases trust and it allows people to make better decisions. Like in this case, you will not quit university, you will not quit eating bananas, and you will not quit eating salt. So the little me now grew up and, uh, and realized that I cannot change the fact that life, both life and science are uncertain. What I can do, however, and what I am doing, is finding tools how to communicate these uncertainties properly. If we communicate uncertainties timely and in a proper way, we can save lives in nuclear emergency situations. <laughs> Thank you, Shun. Feriana Hoti, thank you so much. Vielen, vielen Dank. And now it's your